There we go. The button's on. Dominic Izzo, Izzo Wing Chun out here in Chicago. Hope you guys are doing well. I want to go over this again. And uh, I've been on Instagram quite a bit lately, and Instagram has been popping some stuff up in my feed I'm going to share with you. But I want to go over the realities of a street fight for one different, for one kind of specific reason. I think that our society has kind of dumbed down, or at least when I was a kid, people didn't get involved in street fights, meaning they didn't stop them, right? And you're, the younger generation is truly robbed of one of the greatest gifts of a fight, and that's self-discovery and friendship. And what I mean by that is, I, to this day, there are guys that uh, bullied me in high school my freshman year that we're online and we talk and we get along so damn well because I stood up for myself. Um, one of the best moments, I had just started wrestling when I was 12, and one of the best moments ever for me was I was uh, bullied incessantly in uh, high school, right? Because I went from a Catholic grammar school where there really wasn't any too many problems, right? I mean, you busted balls, but that's about it, to a public fucking high school. And it was a world of change for me. And one guy, I mean, I it was, five, it was five foot three going into fucking high school. 112 pounds. It was ridiculous. So I go into high school, and um, there's a, a, one guy just keeps bullying me like crazy for the entire fucking year. When winter came, uh, that, well, so it was a few months, right? We got August, September, October, November, December. This is, Jan this is December, and... Um, it was always already wrestling season, and in gym class, we uh, we played something called Bull in the Ring, and I can't see any any fucking high school doing this today because of how criny and why baby people crying crying and whiny and big baby people are. But it it was a free for all. It was a fucking free for all. It was was you're inside of the circle in the wrestling mat upstairs because we were doing wrestling for gym class, so it was like great. And it was last man standing in the ring wins. You can't put, you can't punch, you can't slap, you can't do anything, but you can pick people up, you got to drag, get them out. It's like giant sumo with everybody in there. I was the, the out of um, the entire gym class, I was the third guy left in. And I realized, and after was great, right? It took the last two guys, both picked me up and threw me out. And I'm, as I'm panting for breath recovering, the guy who had bullied me sat there and he patted me on the fucking back. Because it's all about respect. And at that point I went, holy shit, I'm fucking strong as shit. For a little guy, and if you actually stand up for yourself, you gain fucking respect. Holy shit. Your generation, the younger generation loses this. Because now, you get in a fight at school, instead of becoming friends with that person, you guys go and online bully each other, which is stupid as shit in the fucking world. And then your parents get involved, and somebody gets arrested. So, my point being is, the reality of fighting is lost. It's and everybody and their mother thinks they're an MMA fighter now. Everybody fucking out there. It's just ridiculous. But I want to talk about the street fights, right? Because they're brutal, they're horrible, they're painful, and they're they're heartbreaking when you find out what you do to another human being. Yeah, and I've talked about this before. If you've ever been in a fight and you you connect with somebody, you split their head open, fucking you you wind, you, you, hurt, you break an arm, something. When your adrenaline comes down and you're done, like, yeah, did you see what I did, this and that? The tone sets in where you're like, I did that to another human being. And it's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. If you've never experienced it, well, I hope you never do. But if you do, I hope it's lawful and it's righteous. End of story. But I know that a lot of us on YouTube are, gu are guilty for the the what if scenarios and if he does this, I'll do this. My channel's got him. I love the Wing Chun art and I teach a lot of the art that would be like the movie Wing Chun, right? The cool stuff. But I also know how to translate that into fighting for self-defense and safety and fucking annihilation of the enemy. So many people don't. And I don't mean to keep picking on them, but we're going to go back to this because we're going to look at Thomas Marks. And I think this is one of the most irresponsible teachers online because he doesn't talk about the reality of combat. He talks about what Bruce Lee wrote down, you know, and again, another kid who truly had no idea what the reality of fighting was. Everything out of Bruce Lee's mouth was fucking theory theory. If you, I, I, there's a, there's a man on YouTube named Mark freedom. Who's got a very extensive background in Wing Chun to where he actually went to China, Hong Kong, and he was training there. And Mark had told me years ago, he goes, you know these rooftop fights everybody talks about? I'm like, yeah, he goes, do you know what they are? I'm like, no. According to Mark, he said the rooftop fights where a first person to get knocked down loses. So they go two, three, four, five seconds. That's a rooftop fight. They weren't knocked down, drag out, drag out, knock down brawls that everybody says. So if Bruce Lee was in a rooftop fight, 
It was sparring with your hands with no gloves on, maybe. Somebody gets a split lip, whatever. It wasn't the chaos of a fight. But again, Thomas Marks is great for choreographing movies. He is not good for fighting. 100%. I think if you follow this stuff, you will get her severely hurt. But I want to talk about this again, and I want to look at, we're going to look at what he talks about, because then we're going to talk about the reality of this. Street fighting and street defense in real Jeet Kune Do. Hi guys, today we're gonna talk about how to use actually Jeet Kune Do as it was meant to be used. So in street fighting, in real environment, that's why we have no training clothes on today. So we have street clothes, so we, you have jacket, you have jeans, and you have of course your shoes on. Depending on what kind of shoes you have, you can even kick with the tip of the shoe to the knee or even to the shin. The most significant difference between sport fighting and street fighting is the start of the fight. So because in street you're defending yourself, you're rarely the one who is attacking first. You see the guy from the distance and you immediately know this guy has noticed you and there's a kind of danger. So now you walk and he comes in front of you and he blocks your waist. Now what you wanna do is you keep the distance. As soon as he closes the distance, you can actually attack. But you can give him a chance, so when he closes the distance, you can back off, and if he continues to come towards you, then you attack him. So you keep your distance, then he comes, you back off, he's, he's, he's still coming forward, then you can attack him. In this case, I use the eye jab because this is the most efficient and most effective attack. If you keep the distance, he comes, you back off, and he doesn't follow you, so of course there's no fight. You only fight if he comes too close to you. It doesn't even have to be that he actually launches an attack. Okay, now he's close, and you say, well, I'm gonna defend myself when he attacks me. From here he can stab me, okay? He can punch me, he can use the other hand, quickly, right? He can even knee in the groin, okay? So these are all the things he can actually do. Even if he wants, he can dive in and grab me, right? So from this distance, it's really hard to react. That's why you want to keep your distance. Now when he comes, either you go in, right? Or you step back, and if he continues, you can then launch your attack. He comes. Is that a fair enough? time that I gave him out of his uh, video to explain street fights, keep distance, and if they come in, uh, build G to the eyes. I'm sure he would do, let me, let me just jump out. Yeah, I'm sure he's gonna do, let's see. Fed myself. As if I, if I was in on guard, he comes, I step back, I go forward. More, more just the starting point is okay. here, this one. You step back, you can go here. You step back, you can go here. Okay, there it is. Yeah. You step back. Tap the knee. You can oh, yeah, go here yeah. to okay. the knee, you, you retreat. I just want to, I want to get that on record. Again, and I could have done this video about tons of Wing Chun people out there, but again, I'm going after uh, Thomas because I think that his stuff exclusively showcases lies about the reality of fight. The man's never been in a fight, never has. With, with the, the Bruce Lee sidekick to the knee, right? Can you picture somebody bigger than you coming in Forwarding energy coming into you, you turn your body to sidekick lower to the knee. You're on one foot. You completely lose balance. You have no facing. You're going to go over like a bowling pin. That's just one scenario. But let's start looking at if any of those things, including eye jabs, bilgies, if any of those things apply to fights. Let's look at some of these fights. I have a... Uh Oh, yeah. I'm not getting caught on that. Let's look at this fight again. What was this? This was a fight somewhere. This is on Instagram. Uh, pull up all these things. So I can't go back on them. Well, this, so this, how do you incorporate? Oh, look at that. Should have just, you just bilge eat him in the eye. Definitely. I mean, he closed the distance like Thomas Mark said. Okay. Well, I want to see the beginning of that again. Okay, well, so, so far we know. Okay, so far we know that, yeah, okay, let's see. And, oh, yeah, well, see, I guess that worked. He got Bill G'd right in the eye. Close the distance. Okay, so that's score one for Thomas. Let's keep going, shall we? Let's look at this one. 
Bill G, Bill G, kick him in the knee. Kick him in the knee. What do we got going on here? Come on, kick him in the knee. Kick him in the, get him in the knee. All right, see, up. Clearly, clearly a knee stomp or Bill G would have stopped that one. Let's see what else we got. Uh, this is an example of what fights used to be. I, I saved this one for the fucking end of it. This is brilliant. Granted, they're by a Prius, but it's okay. Sometimes people are like, why did you move back to New York? And I was like, I don't know. I just really love the ambiance. And like, there's such a charm. They're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting. And they fucking make up. Dude, that's it right there. That's respect. Motherfucking respect. Well, let's look at this for a second. This is a literal street fight. Okay, wild swings. That's a big over. Oh, there's the, look at that. Like big overhand rights there. Wild haymakers. But clearly, uh, Bill G would have stopped that or a knee stomp. Let's see what else we have. How about this one? Oh, this one clearly uh, is going to be a good one for uh, the knee stomp. I don't want to get, I don't need to get dinged. Oh! Ah, that one creeps me out. That man's arm is out of commission. If he had only stomped the knee when the guy, he can't even, dude, boom, comes in. Ooh, fucked up his arm on that one. I'm not watching that again. But clearly a knee stomp or distance control would have taken care of that. How about this one? Okay, this one's perfect. This is where almost every single fight today starts. There's only one of two places. If it's not the MMA, okay, it's either ambush, where it comes out of an uncontrolled distance, you don't know where it's coming from, or posturing. Most of the time, this is posturing. Right here, this is it. You see exactly what they're doing, hands behind their back, because nobody wants to be accused of swinging first. Uh, sometimes you can articulate, I was in terrible fear for my safety, you better start swinging first. But this is, po this is, this is, uh, I'll fight start. I'll fight whoever. I'll fight whoever. Knock your bitch ass out. Knock me out. Knock your bitch ass out. Knock me out. Knock me out. You see the blading. Okay. Blading is done of one of two things, right? Psychologically, it shows that I'm not going to attack you, but if he's uh, left-handed right there, then he's taking a right strong stance because he's going to swing with that uh, that right. But he's, again, too, the, this, this is exactly how fights start. You look at the guy in the white pants, his balance is gone. He has no balance whatsoever. His legs are too close together. So he doesn't want to fight. And he's turning as a position of submission to agree. Right. That's submission right there. We saw it. We saw it all. We saw it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Saw Once he starts imploring, you know, and starts pleading, he's submitted. Fine, that's good. End the fight that way. But this is how, and he walks away. That This is, why couldn't he just build GM? Finger, finger poke to the eyes. Groin kick, why not? That's a fight, dude. That's how fights wind up starting. Let's continue and see what else. Uh, oh, this is... Go. Where's the belt G? Come on. Good environment. Again, fights start out of nowhere. Watch how fast this, this, this starts. I don't know what the words were beforehand. But watch, boom, just... Uh, boom, just, there's no time. You think if you're going to be reactive, you're out of your mind. He who moves first wins first, and it's just your reactions better be based off of that. Guy almost got fucking knocked into an L train. That would have been it, dude. End of story. Uh, let's keep moving on. What do we have here? This one. There's another fight. Footing. Look at your what's your environment? Yeah, how, it's kind of hard to build G or groin kick if you can't even stay on your feet. What kind of shoes you wearing? Is the surface uh, is it smooth surface, slippery, incline? Are there multiple people around you just swinging? I know a lot of us do multiple drills in uh, uh, our art, but are you? The, remember, I keep talking about Danny Horgan, how Danny came in, and a lot of people mocked me and said, "Oh, you couldn't even ha handle." Uh, you couldn't even handle Danny. And the concept was, here's a guy whose energy was different and chaotic from, air quotes, normal chi out, right? So if you always train for Wing Chun against Wing Chun or Wing Chun against boxing, Wing Chun against JKD, Wing Chun against wrestling, Wing Chun against whatever, are you training against Wing Chun against the, the non-trained fucking 
psycho fighter? Because more often than not, those are the people that you're going to deal with. Do any one of these guys look trained to you? Do you any? Look, is there any? Tra- it's all that wild punches you. Look, well, well, train for that. Here comes the broad out of nowhere. Train for that. Just, oh, boom! She's yeah, light. She's counting sheep there. There, where's the training? But of course, remember, everybody comes at you non-classical, right? The Bruce Lee method. More fight. Where's your groin kick? Where's your groin kick? Where's your knee stomp? Where's your Bill Jean? And don't and don't make make no mistake about it, guys. Believe it or not, this is where Chi Sao helps out with everything because you're this close. Most of the time, the distance of fights are already closed for you because guys want to be inside of the arc of your wild swing. Here's another one. That's security just waiting to taste something. Just a fucking mess. Well, those are cops, so that's a different story. Well, and security. Uh, what's this one? Oh, yeah. Groin kick. Clearly, groin kick would have worked there. <laughs> Clearly. Where's the eye poke? Where's the groin? <laughs> Big, sweeping fucking right. And no balance. Close quarters. All this shit. Yep. Plenty of room to take a distance. What's this one? Let's see. Oh, Jim fights are the worst. That guy's got a fucking weapon. I got to deal with that one. I, I I saw one Jim fight. Oh, shit. 20 years ago. Pissed me off. Ruined my workout. I didn't go back to that gym. I was so fucking pissed. They're the worst. Uh, oh, here. You know. See this one. Yeah, look, oh, look at the... Is he breakdancing? Dude, motherfucker is breakdancing while they're fighting. Okay, this might be the best, best fucking fight I've ever seen. But again, look at the background. <laughs> I didn't see this video before I, I wound up putting it up there. Holy shit. Good moment of fucking applause for uh, this dude who is simply, he, he won today. That's, there you go. Look at that. Bravo. Bravo. All right, uh, I got a couple more I want you guys to see just because I want you to see this is the reality of fights. See the posturing? That's, and we're going to play that again because watch. Watch the guy grab the wrists. That's what men do for control, right? Because you control those wrists apparently, can't hit you. It's, I've seen it hundreds of times when I used to work in the bars. We used to do it. Used to walk up to the guy, we'd, and if my hands were down... Guys would grab my wrists, and I was like, oh, game on, fucking. Because now I got wrestling, and I got cheese out. It's like, now I know where you are. So I always was fine with guys who would grab my wrists. Here's the fights again. Big, wild fights. Got see, turn the These are uneducated fighters. And you guys think that everybody's going to be a JKD master, BJJ master, MMA master, Wing Chun, karate, whatever. No. No, this is what you're going to run into in street fights. This is why guys like Thomas have no fucking clue what they're talking about with street fights. You don't want a street fight. Street fights are stupid. They're, they're actually horrible, horrible, horrible displays of non-skill. All right, I want to play this again because I can't remember. I'm going to reset this. Just watch the guy in the beginning. He goes for the, the guy in the black hat grabs the guy's wrists. See right there? That gives distance. That's that's going to be the equivalent of like what a jab would be for, right? Jab is a feeler. It's the same thing. You're putting out that feeler. He knows the distance. Now he knows exactly how he is to wind up clocking him. That's uh, fantastic. Uh, where's my... I got a couple more. <clears throat> yep, this one's horrible. Yeah, you're in the environment. Just looking around. That's a great hat. I wouldn't get involved in that shit either, bro. I mean, that's the reality of a fight, dude. That's a big dude. Look, look at all the shit. No, they, they, that's, is that like beer or pop or something? 
Dumb. All right, and then last one. Clearly, I grow, I poke or groin stomp would have worked on this. Oh, yeah, clearly, clearly, clear. There you go. Groin kick, groin kick. Side kick to the knee. Bruce Lee back fist. The more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. <laughs> Guys, I just, I've been storing those up the last couple of days because I've been looking at them going, you know, this, I, this is what we teach for. And to be honest, this is where a lot of what Chisau lives in because Chisau, the information's coming into you, you know, your, where your arms are and you're, you're learning. Where do I move my feet? Where do I lower my level? Where do I disengage? Where do I do whatever? And, you know, people like Thomas don't know this. This is exactly why I went to Wing Chun and not any other martial art because it lived in all the spaces that you said. Now, Sadly, we've got some real horse shit Wing Chun out there that they still train for the straight punch to come in and the Tan, you know, Pac, all, Gan Sao, triple 12 hits within half of a second shit that would not have done any good in any of those circumstances. But if all of we looked at is for grappling uh, uh, context in Wing Chun, uh, you would have seen a complete difference. Again, I, you know, I just, I just don't, I don't have any respect for him, to be honest. That's why I keep talking about uh, uh, Thomas Marks. If you guys like him, great. Subscribe to his stuff. I think he would be great for coordinating movies. But when it comes down to fighting context, you know, he's he's over six feet tall. It's going to take a guy. Uh, if his if his student really wanted to, he'd take his ass down to the ground instantly. Taller guys are just so that once you get within a certain range of them, they have no uh, game. Um, Unless you're John Jones, then it's a different fucking story. But then again, too, a guy like John Jones won't be fighting you on the street because he's either worried about null and voiding his contract by breaking his fist on your head or he's got a pile of cocaine to do. I don't know. Either way, it is what it is. Guys, have a great damn day, and I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget, Saturday's live. Saturday's live, 12 Central, 1 Eastern. That is also 10 Pacific and 11 Mountain live guests uh i don't have anybody lined up for tomorrow per se so if i know now it's just always going to be live and uh guys come hang out hang out in the chats and um sometimes we'll do interviews sometimes it'll be just us so you guys have a great damn day see you in the next video